Hello, denizens of the internet. Welcome to another split screen adventure. Uh, I am reviewing with a script doctor uh, here who's incognito because he is in the Hollywood Witness Protection Program. Uh, he helps many movies and scripts and TV shows get better. And for that reason, he, his identity uh, must be a, a secret. Um, and I, I don't know, we don't have to explain why you need to be kept a secret because you know what you're doing and and <laughs> <laughs> yeah i almost want to have like my voice distorted as a joke as well like <laughs> you know? that, that, you, what that's not uh, a distorted yeah, voice voice, voice distorted with regards to like how you yes have, i know like, 60 yeah. minute interviews like <laughs> that's right <laughs> i can't do the actual impression of course myself because i'm not a former so so this is not an alien this, this is we, not we, an alien no you, this, i'm not a... speaking to a pod creature from the planet zircon this is this no. Is script in fact, talk. I'm actually in. I'm actually in my living room, and behind me, this is my my projector wall that I I use projector paint on, this is, and uh, just got a, a lamp because this is like the darkest part of my home. So that's <laughs> why I, I ended up using it. That's why I also. Well, I, I love this. This is very intriguing, and yeah. we went. Both of us went to see Sound of uh, Freedom uh, yesterday. Yeah. Packed, yeah. packed audience. It was a Wednesday. It was a Wednesday. The only rows that were not occupied were those first three rows that are like neck breaker ones. Right. The but everything else, like everybody, uh, I think the only seat that wasn't occupied was the one directly next to me that you were not in. <laughs> like uh, there was no one yes. on my left, but everybody else was like shoulder to shoulder throughout almost the entire theater. That which I, I think was, uh, which was amazing. So we're going to talk about, well, we're going to review our, our, well, pro provide our thoughts, but not mm -hmm. just that, but I think there's a sociological story to this also that I wanted to talk about because uh, it encompassed not only who uh, were in the audience, but also the trailers that they ended up showing. And there's a lot of controversy around this movie that has gone beyond just its review, but I, I want to concentrate on its entertainment value. I don't want to get into the politics. I don't want to get into you know the oh that's minutia yeah absolutely yeah, and, and also the ac accusation of you know pedo hollywood trying to prevent this from you know getting out because of conspiracy theories and also the uh the mainstream media accusing it of being a QAnon a movie which uh, it, it's not it's, it's there's no mention of any of that stuff in this film like that's one thing that like you don't hear anything about the QAnon or any of those people rallying against it. It's really just a very specific story. It is essentially the inciting incident that leads to the creation of what Tim Ballard uh, did after he left Homeland Security. Right. And it's focused on reuniting um, two siblings that were taken uh, by these, th this uh, human trafficking cartel. By the way, by the way, spoiler alert, if you're watching this, and you haven't seen Sound of Freedom, then uh, the, we, we are going to be spoiling the film for you. Not that it's a difficult film to understand. <laughs> no. And, and Not the a other complex part, film. And on top of that, too, if you are someone interested in this movie and you've done any like cursory research, you know that this is based on a, a number of true events. And you also might know the resolution as a result of research. <laughs> I've just taken sure. some of the interviews because, uh, again, that's one of the things that's been kind of... Um, uh, making the the circuit as well as a lot of the Tim Ballard's doing a lot of promotion. Chip Caviezel is doing a lot of promotion on this. Um, I would, I mean, I understand why they didn't, but the children are so good in this. Um, hold on. Uh, sorry, my screen just went blank for a minute there. The children are so good in this movie. Well, everyone, I, everyone, I, like I, the, everyone. The, the supporting cast is staggering. Uh, and that's one of the other things that I don't know where to start, actually. I, 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 well, first of all, did you like the movie? I did. Yes. Okay. And you're um, very critical um, I am very about critical films. For, for what this was and the fact, I mean, th there's a lot of movies that are based on a true story that are highly <laughs> um, creatively. True, true story. Exactly. <laughs> true stories that are highly and creatively, take a lot of creative liberties. Right. And. This one here, I, I would assume, takes some creative liberties, but it's played, it's played with a lot of discipline to the point where I get more engaged into the story as opposed to seeing, you know, something like Liam Neeson's Taken, where things sure. get, you have these rapid cuts, you have the, the the cinematography and the editing is designed to build up the urgency and stakes for it. Where this movie goes, not necessarily the opposite way. It is. It's an anti-Taken. 
but it is an anti taken. Yeah, but, but it just takes more control over what it wants to do. There's very little dialogue from Jim Caviezel in this whole film. Um, he, he does almost the least amount of speaking uh, next to some of the kids. But, uh, like, he is just, um, he is our avatar exploring this part of the world and doing these stings. Uh, and, and this, again, the cinematography and some of the vistas that they capture, absolutely brilliant and, and beautiful. And they really spend every single cent of this $14 million budget to give you uh, a good experience. And it's not, it's not over edited. It's not overproduced. Um, yeah, that that's the the general positives I can give it right now. It's really compelling. Uh, they don't. <laughs> I I never felt like I was. I never felt that I could tell I'm being manipulated by the emotions being put on the screen. I felt like they were coming across authentically, as opposed to ham fisted or or too on the nose or, or anything of that nature. And uh, I was very engaged. And um, so much so that I wasn't really even paying attention to the rest of the audience around me. Like that was actually, I think, a good sign is that, OK, I'm interested. I want to see what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I like, like like this one, you could tell the director really understood how he wanted to lay out the, these scenes. And there's a book ending to it that's absolutely brilliant uh, that I with their opening and closing shots. I love that. I thought that was great. And there's a lot of full circle little events that go around through this because they really do try to make this a very self-contained story. They're not trying to make this into a franchise film. They're, they're putting this, the, the characters and their journey. There is going ahead. to be a, a second film. Yes, they are. Because um, when they, when they finished making this one, and uh, I guess by the time they finished making it, Disney and Fox were in negotiations to sell, but Fox had plans to release this anyways. And as a result of that, they're like, okay, well, let's do a sequel because, and I learned this from one of the interviews, during the time that Tim Ballard is going on to this mission uh, to rescue the kids from Honduras, they're also doing another organization in Haiti. And those two are kind of going, uh, you know, concurrently uh, to, to a degree. Like mm. he was bouncing back between both of them is my understanding, but I could be wrong there. And so that's what it is. They wrote that script. They're all set to ready to get a green light based on the performance of this movie. But Disney purchased Fox, and then Disney did this to almost all of Fox's properties. They just shelved them, which uh, is not unusual for Hollywood, anyway. I mean, exactly. When if if a new general comes into town into a studio, then pretty much everybody's uh, <laughs> everything goes into turnaround, as they call it, right? Pretty much, unless you're like right up to the wire, where you're like, yeah. oh, we only have four more weeks of editing left, and then we have to release this because we already booked the schedule. Fine, we'll get it out. Well, this whatever. movie was finished. This movie yeah. was finished and done five years ago. And, exactly. and and I'm just wondering if it was released five years ago, if it was, it would have been just a movie, and and it has taken mm -hmm. on a life of its own, uh, you know, in the intervening five years. That is, and and so I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg, whether the movie itself. Uh, uh, in upon its most recent release and the struggles to release it uh, imbued it with a sense of urgency that wouldn't have been there if the original film was just released as a film. But my, mm -hmm. my overall, uh, my overall uh, view of this, and I wrote, wrote this in uh, my, my Twitter thing is uh, uh, my quick Twitter review was sound of uh, freedom with a script doctor who is here. Well shot worth seeing supporting cast is unbelievably great. Jim Caviezel uh, does a good impression of a plank of wood, not a criticism. We'll get into that a bit overly melodramatic at the start, a great episode of CSI Miami. So yes. uh, it, it does have a, a TV kind of feel to it. It, it does. It, 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 well, I, as I said before, it's a very disciplined film. Yes. Yes. And, and, and uh, like last night, after, while we were talking after the, the show, I, I brought up, okay, yeah, it kind of has the traditional, like, you know, we have Mission Impossible that's out in theaters, right? right? And Mission Impossible is a very stunt-based story. Uh, it, like, it's big, extravagant, but the, the original television series was not that. It was actually kind of the opposite. It was all about trying to, you know, achieve a mission without the people that you're your victims essentially knowing about it. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of what they were, they were doing it. Like this was the strategy for Tim Ballard and his crew is that we are going to set up these operations to bring these people, these, these traffickers to us so that we can capture them. And the idea. Right. And, and that's the specific, that's the story, the yeah. plot of this, the, this movie. What, what I, you know, what I 
like, and, and every single movie, everyone knows what the endings are of a movie. And, and the most, for the most part, you know, if you have a trial movie, the person's either going to get off or going to be guilty. I mean, those are, it's, it's binary. And yeah. in this particular case, you know that the two kids are going to be saved because yes. that's just the nature of this movie. So uh, uh, what, what I liked about this is that the journey to get to that ending was interesting enough to keep my attention. Whereas I'm finding with modern movies, they're doing a really bad job with the middle part and thinking they think that the ending is the reason for the movie. The ending is not the reason for the movie. The ending is just the ending. We know what the ending is going to be. It's the journey that makes it interesting, what decisions you make. Uh, plus, uh, you, you, you throw in cast. A good cast can make a journey interesting in of itself. And the cast in this is, is next level in a way mm -hmm. that I haven't seen in an awful long time. And oh my God, did they go for it, especially the, Scor the guy who played the Scorpion at the very end. Mm -hmm. What a disgusting human. What a character. Yeah, he and sold it. And oh my God. And his henchmen sold it. You never got the sense that, oh, oh, that's that stunt guy I've now seen in 18 different Hollywood movies. Yeah. The big guy who's you know, going to get smashed at the very end. And the other part too, that I also felt was great is that when each sort of antagonist, when each trafficker or gang leader, whatever came on, on screen, they didn't have, always have a lot of screen time, but they really oh. did make an impact. Like and the Sunday woman who was the, the the Giselle, yes, the, the Giselle, the, the supermodel who's turned supermodel. Into oh my career. God! What evil! What unbelievable oh, evil! And and that's what sold the film because you you knew what was going to happen. Yep. And because it's a PG thirteen or PG fourteen film, you know you're not going to see anything horrific. But they put it into your mind how horrific it all was, and it was creepy as. Oh, I, I, my my, the the montaging of the children getting their photos taken oh. for what they believe is a modeling shoot and stuff was really disturbing. Like because you was, knew I what was, was how it was going to end, and yeah. you're screaming at the at the the screen, "Don't do it! Go away! Like, These kids need to get out of here!" <laughs> like, um, and the yeah. fact that it was such a beautiful woman doing it mm -hmm. just made the evil greater. It wasn't some slobbering guy. In in a sweaty yes. singlet, they they used a they well they used a real tactic that I suppose is being used in in some of these situations and also for the film you have this type of uh, visual irony oh why would such a beautiful woman who who is a woman who goes through these beauty pageants who does does all these things who's probably been a little bit harassed at points why would she perpetuate this at such a money a horrible magnitude money massive yeah, exactly. amounts of money oh well obviously m money but it's like there's no conscience to her like she's she is literally the um she's a siren essentially like that's yeah so i mean the the movie did emphasize the enormity of the trafficking situation yes and and i and, and you know someone commented that that was the point of the film and my comment was well a film ultimately ultimately is entertainment and if you don't find a way to uh, uh get involved in the entertainment then it's you're then it's not entertainment. So that fact has uh, you know, more to do with keeping you interested in the movie than just laying out a bunch of dry facts that are going to get you pissed off later. I mean, th th these are two yeah. separate things. So, uh, and I, I don't know what was more important from the director's point of view, but I, I didn't get the sense that he was ladling on the message, but it was, I mean, it was obviously emphasized and really made for a very compelling movie. And and I'm fascinated by why Hollywood is not accepting this as just entertainment. And my one complaint about the movie is that I would have loved it to be a little bit more clinical without the uh, swelling music at, in the first part of it with every single melodramatic moment. I didn't think it needed. It would have been, for me, again, this is a minor comment, Obviously, yeah. the movie is a hit and people are going to it and they're crying. I mean, the woman next to me was in tears um, at uh, at the very end. But yeah, it's I felt a little cold because it's like I'm really emotionally drawn to this, but not to the point of tears because it's like it's not it's not like a happy cry, which a lot of the people in the audience had. It was just more like, well, I, I almost lost it when the daughter uh, was reconnected with the father. 
I don't know yeah. how she acted that. How how she acted that so authentically, I've I've never seen anything better. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was. I mean, like it made, left me silent, but didn't make me teary because, I, and obviously because I have a little bit of a distance because I don't have children of my own. But it's like I was just so happy. I, I had this like happy emotional like. Uh, overwhelming uh, emotion saying like, I'm just so happy that she got to see her dad again, that the dad's back there. But what really kind of put me too closer to that edge was when the little bo brother came back Oh, and just how, and she saw her brother. She I mean. saw her brother who she thought she was never going to see again. Yeah. But, and, you know, kind of her, her action of, of bestowing hope to him with, by passing on that necklace that she has and, and how that comes full circle, uh, is the whole reason why it's there. It's showing like love, compassion, and hope and the can, can help can basically get the attention of the right. And that's, and so. that's writing leisure domain. That I mean, yes. le le leisure, legendary, <laughs> no, leisure domain, like magic. I mean that you, you, mm -hmm. you put stuff in that and you go, my God, I'm clever. That was good. I mean, we, <laughs> you know, we, we know what the writer is thinking and the audience is like bawling their eyes out, but the writer's going, this will get them. <laughs> this will get them. Yeah. And it did. I mean, I thought that was uh, good. I, I would have, I would really like to know whether Tim actually went into the, uh, you know, the deepest, darkest regions of where are they in Nicaragua or, or Cartagena? Cartagena is, is one of them. And then the other part was south of Col somewhere in Colombia. But like where, where the where the police would not go. The, I mean, the police. I mean, it was it was great. And the policemen were not corrupt. I mean, they just avoided an awful lot of cliches. Yeah, they really did, because they they made the story of this is the way I look at it with regards to the theme. The theme that the, the movie presents is these could, I mean, we don't want it to be, but these could potentially be your children. So that's the motivation we want to have some right. of these characters, uh, you know, have with these, some of these characters. That's what Tim Ballard's character is going through because he's looking at his own kids. He's then having to make, he's then having to do a, um, a, a scene by scene report of a video that he doesn't want to watch. And it's just right. it's getting to him. He's like, it's okay. It's one thing to catch these people. But just like what we get towards the beginning of the movie where his subordinate is, they're saying like, well, how many children have you rescued? And that's that's the thing. It's like you're doing this to oh, yeah. the children. And, but and, and I love point, the fact that the the the, the recent Hollywood trope uh, of uh, uh, diversity casting uh, didn't yes. take you there. There wasn't a single five foot one woman in a in a police outfit storming the island. No, no, there was not. <laughs> I mean, it's, um, it's, it, 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 that Hollywood doesn't understand how that takes you out. Now, this movie was eighty percent Latino. I mean, doesn't that count as diverse? So, I but Hollywood doesn't count the Latin community. But here's the other part too: the Lat La La Latino as aspect, while um, definitely present, was not something that entered into my mind no. because each actor just sold it. Like even the the cop that he meets, um, uh, Javier yeah. Godino, who plays the cop that he meets. Uh, in guy who uh, looks like Paul Rudd, guy who looks like Paul Rudd, Cardiano, uh, he's committed, he's charming, he's knowledgeable, he's confident. Yep. Uh, like, here's the other part too. There are little moments of levity in the movie. You and I were the only ones that yeah. kind of picked up on that. <laughs> <In> the, <laughs> like the, the guy leaves the car, like it's a busted up van. It's really janky looking. But he, as he leaves it, he tells the this random guy in the street, "Hey, keep an eye on my Ferrari," and then it just goes through. <laughs> so let's that. let's let's. I, I, so I think we both recommend the the film. Yes. Uh, I, I, let's wrap things up. I, I thought that the the trailers were interesting because it's clear that they were uh, they weren't the usual trailers. We didn't see Marvel trailers. We didn't see Sony. Uh, we did see one like a Sony. What is this? A separate label. We saw um, a Sony picture. Uh, Lionsgate. One of the subsidiary pictures. Um, yep. We saw Lionsgate, and then we saw another one, which I. I can't remember who the studio was, but, but they were all kind of uh, targeted towards uh, religious audiences. More, would you say, faith-based audiences? Faith-based, yes, yeah. Okay. yeah, much more faith-based audience. They certainly knew who was coming to the uh, to the to watch, and it's too bad that this movie is considered a you know part of the faith-based milieu. And that's the point I was making. What, what what is stopping this from just being entertainment? Why aren't aren't the uh, the the mainstream uh, honchos in Hollywood yeah. 
viewing this as just country. another piece of entertainment? Why why is this being dumped into the faith based uh, category? And 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 uh, that is always used as in, in a derisive way. And and the other thing that we brought up too is. Uh, both of the characters, one is plays a devout Christian and the other guy, um, uh, Jorge, uh, you know, sort of returns to his. Oh, Christian. no camps. Yeah, he okay, um, re re returns he's... to his Christian roots to help the kids. And and I'm I'm agnostic. I, I don't really care. I yeah. Mean, uh, but the idea that you can't have a character that is devoutly Christian is part of their their character just seems Hollywood is scared to death. <laughs> like why this, yeah. like, a, a ton of people are very religious. Why can't you have a religious character? Why does Hollywood hate having a religious character? It's, it's one of those things where, well, I mean, uh, that gives a person a whole different set of values and textures and ideas and, and prejudices. And why can't you do that? It seems that Hollywood, that, that, that's a giant uh, uh, X on any film. No, my God. You can't yeah, have a it's like I think some of them, I think some of them look view at it uh, in the same way as uh, other people view virtual sig virtue signaling. I think that's what they probably ah. feel like there's a dichotomy there, even though I don't think it's an authentic interpretation of that. I suspect that might be their perspective where when when we can see someone who does something that is clearly a virtue signal that might not even feel authentic or, or real versus another person, say, who is a religious person who does something. And they're just saying, well, they're only doing it because it's uh, they're following the the, the texts that with which they uh, ascribe to, as opposed to a person that's just doing it of their own volition because right is right regardless of whether there's well, a deity or something. And I'm like, that's that that's not that's not required when you're wanting to write a good story because when you if you have someone who's religious or not religious, either way, you're giving an aspect to a character. Yeah, it's their backstory. You can have it, fun it, with them. Yeah. yeah, the audience out there listening to us this was not a big part of the movie, but it was interesting that there was this moment and it made sense. And, and Hollywood does have its, you know, uh, religious characters, but it's usually a, a slavering uh, priest who's abusing children. <laughs> That's yeah. Um, <laughs> or, or hiding behind the veil of religion to commit when any other type of atrocity. Or that's right. Like that. The albino. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that and that's that's pretty much Hollywood's shorthand for anybody who's religious. So, like someone like me who's not religious at all, why wouldn't I write someone who, a good guy who has that? Yeah, has that? Like, I I don't see their the the fear of Hollywood over portraying that, and and I think that's possibly one of their fears of 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 this movie. Now, I I I think it's a great simple film. I don't want to overblow it. Like I said, it's like a really really good episode of CSI Miami. Yeah. <laughs> and and you know what that's, that's and I don't mean to favorite. say that to, as a derisive way either. No, I don't even think of it as that way because it's like if you want something that's very much a change of pace to a tent pole blockbuster, right? That's a compelling story, great characters, phenomenal acting. Acting, oh my god, this fits it, and and you will be very satisfied and yep. with that as well. Um, you you are not preached, you are not preached to in any way. Um, it, it's really just focused about. It's focused on rescuing these kids, and it doesn't it doesn't follow any of the of the silly uh, internal character flaws that have no actual connection yeah, with the plot right. or anything of that nature. Like Jim Caviezel doesn't play an alcoholic or a drug abuser right, or someone right. who's cheating on his wife. He's just a man who loves his family, is doing a difficult job, and he feels that his skills and the the opportunities that he's been presented with need to be seized upon in order to do. The and very that's thing another thing you, you made a great point. Like his dog hasn't been shot. No, his dog hasn't been shot. Although and, John Wick was fun, regardless. Yeah, but but and I'm not not cutting down John Wick. But the exactly. point is, Hollywood loves layering all this bullshit on a character, and that wasn't part of the uh, Jim Caviezel's character. And, and no. that's I thought was great. He's just a, and he's heroic, and he's a guy. And he's a family man, and we can go and he's, and, he's know, committed but, and he's determined. And he and here's right. the other part too. Whenever he's presented with an obstacle, he still refuses to give up and right. he's looking for ways to get around it. And he comes up with some really clever ways. Even his friend, who's the, the mob boss turned uh hero, comes up with one for him. And then these two, those two guys have this one little moment when he comes up with a really interesting plan. 
and he's like, hold out your hand. He's like, why? Just hold out your hand. And he grabs it and, he, and like a handshake is like, we're going to do this. And it's like, okay, we got a little bit of excitement. We got a little bit of passion. And we also got the teamwork. And, and the other part too is it's, it was still, it was a scene with a conflict in it. It wasn't all three guys in affirmation. Right. Saying, yes, we're going to go do this. Yes, we're going to do this. It's like, no, the reality is that this is a dangerous area to go into. You, you might have to face with the idea that the girl is gone and we might not be able to get her back. It's like, I, I just can't commit to that. And, and, that and the was- last thing I'm going to say is that the brief episode, brief appearance of uh, the money guy. Yeah. Right. I can't recall seeing a better looking man. <laughs> <laughs> Eduardo Verastego is playing okay. Him. Yes. Uh, yeah. He's got movie star looks. He does. And he also has a command presence over the scene. He's only in a handful of scenes that you pay attention to him. And it's like, great. He's got looks and talent. I really miss that (laughs) in Hollywood movies. these. So that's it. Uh, Thank you, Script Doctor. It was fun going uh, with you. It was really uh, terrible uh, that you carried this lamp with you into the theater because it really bothered, you know, people were saying, turn the lamp off. And you're going, but I got to stay incognito. And uh, that. Yeah. I mean, the extension cord alone, like 700 foot extension cord that the theater was super upset. Get a battery. Solar power. Yeah. Oh, they were. (laughs) Oh, they. Yeah. The theater. I mean, I'm not going to go again with you if you're going to take this lamp. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I I think that's fair. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining me, and uh, and and so that's it. I'm I'm done. Uh, script doctor, do you want to say anything uh, to some? Other some, than that, it was great uh, hanging out with you, watching this movie, and uh, I, I'm glad I saw it. Yeah, and me I, too. I had, a, I had a fun night. It was it was great to to do that. Uh, yeah. So was, we both recommend uh, the movie, and uh, till next time, Denizens, uh, be seeing you. Bo, bo, bo.